Um, uh, let's have some discussion on this food, poison, medicine, um, food supplement. Uh, if I've understood you correctly, it, so it sounds as if um, there's a, on the one hand there's a, a democratic deficit. People aren't allowed to vote on whether they should have it in their water supply or not. That's right. But on the other hand, hardly any health authorities have forced it on their drinkers. <coughs> Is that right? Yes, it is. They took some time to assimilate the, the 2003 Act uh, and get their thoughts together. And the process takes quite a long time. So they were doing sort of feasibility studies fairly soon after that, Southampton, and went out to consultation in 2008. The rest are waiting in the wings to see if they win this one or not. Ah, so the, 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 the professionals may decide to do it once they see what happens in Southampton? Th th that is, uh, yes. I mean, it's known that three or four at least are keen to. Yes, yes. In other parts of the world, they do have referendums. They've had in parts of America, and some have gone one way, some have another. But our way is this way, despite an assurance, as I said, that it was going to be democratic. Yeah. Do I understand you correctly? that if you put fluoride in toothpaste, the effect is beneficial, yes. without doubt. Yeah. yeah, at very high concentrations, massively higher than in water. Would you support yeah. its inclusion in toothpaste? Yes, for, for people who want it. I don't take it myself because the safety studies haven't been done there either. No. In as far as it gives people responsibility for their own health, I think we should immediately abandon Fluoridation of the tap water and, and suggest to people that they buy toothpaste with fluoride. Then we can all save a lot of time and money and energy. I'm with you on that. It's the fact that poor families don't and don't get round to it and have so bad they don't diet. Clean their teeth or they don't yeah. buy the right toothpaste. Uh, probably both, yes. Yeah. That's what it is, is to help the disadvantaged who can't help themselves. That, that's the idea behind it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, one assumes that by giving one substance, it can help people's, correct people's health problems. Uh, actually, it's much more complex. It's not only fluoride that is missing from the poor people's diet and lifestyle. It's much more than I think there's almost nobody that claims that a lack of fluoride causes tooth decay. Um, so it's generally recognised to be a dietary thing and particularly a sugary thing. Something that Martin, the social scientist, teased out was why didn't the dentist then go for a policy of non-sugarisation instead of fluoridating? And he thought, he, he interviewed so many people who went into it, but he came out with the view that the dentist took the line of least resistance because that would be fighting very big industry indeed. And it was easier to do it on people who, by quite an early stage, were categorised as cranks, particularly in the USA, for opposing this, this substance. Besides which, the dentists have hailed it in Australia and other places as their flagship fluoridation, one of the great benefits of humanity. So there was that, that is his theory as to why they went that way and not a ca campaign against sugary drinks and sugar in food and the diet that you mentioned. Just, just about dentists, I always thought that the profession of dentistry had grown in parallel with the increase in sugar consumption in Western Europe over the past 300 years. Um, I don't see that uh, they would naturally oppose sugarization because this is where their bread and butter comes from. But talking about the, <laughs> talking about the, the, the poor on whose benefit this organization is being undertaken, have there ever been agitating for it? I haven't seen demonstration by poor people demanding the fluoridization of water. Because this strikes me as a very paternalistic <coughs> intervention by mm. people who don't even have been um, given the, rep the power to represent any particular constituency, but who are taking it upon themselves. And I think both the medical evidence but also the social evidence seems to be paper thin for this. That there is a demand and there is a requirement by a certain mm. section of the population for this intervention. Would it be fair to ask the disadvantaged to take to the streets and be articulate about that? Given that surveys show that very few people know whether they're fluoridated or not in the UK. Yeah, that's true. But do people have, know that they have a problem? 
I mean, I, no, I think people uh, realise, my goodness, my teeth are so bad on account of something, or, or are they happily reconciled to their dentistry? So who, who identifies that there's a problem in the first place? That's what I'm asking. Well, the dentists and the public health people, um, to what extent people know themselves whether they have a problem with communities, I just don't know, mm -hmm. I'm afraid. I was always puzzled by the fact that this intervention had support from the dental community, given that they are in, they're fee-for-service people in general. And it seemed to me that that might go against their interests. <coughs> but in fact, when you think about it, um, I mean, it used to be the case, you said, maybe Anne can know the data on this, that. Uh, one of the presents you got for your 21st birthday in Glasgow was a complete dental extraction and a set of, uh, um, of false teeth. When you got married, Oh, when you got married, was it? Right. A wedding present, was it? So, clearly, basically, dentists lose trade at that moment. Uh, so, maybe, in fact, it's to keep people's teeth inside their mouths so that they can continue to make money out of them. I don't know. Martin says they don't lose business significantly. No, no, I wouldn't. Have partly because they control entrance to their own profession, but, but partly because they have plenty of other restorative work to do and so on, so he says. Exactly. I used to teach in a dental school, and the way that, that it was introduced to the first year dental students was once upon a time, dentistry was all busy, busy having to extract teeth. <coughs> then, when we, you know, we could fill teeth and we filled them. Now we've got fluoride toothpaste, we can pay attention to the psychology and sociology, which is what I was moving, moved into to teach, uh, and, and, and we, we, can go, uh, we can go beyond the mouth, was the expression, and treat right. the whole person. So, so if you really wanted to be cynical about that view of dentistry, you could say that they were able to sort of, um, uh, I can't think of an equivalent word for medicalization, but they were medic able to, to do the equivalent for dentistry. You know, in, white way. in other words, if you really wanted to be very cynical about it, you could see that they would always find some territory to colonize if you, know, you had stronger teeth. Mm. And look at the amount of cosmetic dentistry. Mm. It's a mm. huge amount. And but isn't that a way of describing cosmetic dentistry, to go beyond the, beyond the mouth? mouth? In a important way to teach, yes, exactly. Can I, can, can I just add one thing? Um, that I don't subscribe to conspiracy theories on the whole. I think these are good people who genuinely think they're doing good, but have got caught up with a sacred cow. And I think all professions have them. Mine and education did. And they're jolly hard things to slaughter, sac sacred cows. Um, um, not substantially, thinks Martin. Some people go on about it now, but I, I, I haven't found evidence of it. I certainly am glad that um, Vivian accepted this topic. In fact, it was poo-pooed in the um, uh, meeting by, by dentists that <laughs> planned this, this conference. Uh, I think that that's been a very interesting discussion, but we need to draw it to a close now. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Can I, make, can I fly the flag for one thing? Yeah. And that's an ancient Chinese practice of producing the finest, producing the finest water. Uh, which is knocking the teeth. Knocking the teeth involves just clacking the teeth. And if you do it even 20 times, you'll find that it increases the saliva underneath your tongue. Um, oh. And they did it up to a thousand times in the morning. It might not be good for sort of uh, shaving away your tooth surface, but, but it's, it's been practiced in time to this day. And you must cleanse them out from that. But anyway, oh, thank you. It's interesting <laughs> yes. for people to uh, look into.